Hi everyone, it's Jody. Uh, I do have a little word I want to share with you. For a while now, the Lord has impressed on me the simple prayer of um, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, being a warfare prayer. So, you know, I med I've meditated on it. I pray it every day and I've shared it on some of the shows I've been on and some of the other things. And um, so what I wanted to do was share it with you guys. I'm sure some of you guys need a haircut as bad as I do. <laughs> But anyway, I wanted to share it with you guys and um, and see if we can pray in unity to the Lord that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So Jesus was with the disciples and he began to teach them about prayer. And in, in, I'm in the book of Matthew, chapter six, verses five through, let's say, 13 um, or even 14. Uh, and then it's also listed in Luke, I think, the 11th chapter. And right in the first few verses. But anyway, Jesus said to them, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in synagogues and in the corners of the street, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you that they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter thy closet, and when you shut the door, pray to the Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which is seeth in secret shall reward you openly but when you pray don't use vain repetitions as the heathen do for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking but not ye therefore like unto them for your father knoweth the things that you have need of before you even ask him after this manner pray therefore pray ye so it's after this manner pray ye okay pray you pray like okay our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. This is worship to the Father. So the example Jesus is giving us is to worship the Father. Come to the Father. Father, we know that you are in heaven above all things. And you are holy. And then he says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. One of the things the Lord has really been impressing upon me is that Throughout the word of God, he always tells man what to do. He tells man, you know, um, Moses, uh, strike the rock or raise the rod and the sea parted. God does the miracle, but he asks us to interact. It's kind of like um, uh, un unwritten law, like gravity. Gravity exists because God spoke it into being. When God created us, he gave us dominion over the earth. So we speak in the earth and he if, if we speak according to his will, if you're in prayer and you're in the word of God, nine times out of ten, your prayers will be according to his will. But he will accomplish that. He told Ezekiel, speak to the dry bones. He, I mean, so throughout the word of God, he, he is teaching us that he gave us dominion. So what do we do with that dominion? We call his will into the earth. This is what he's been telling me is major warfare. Thy will be done, O God, on earth as it is in heaven. We want to see an end to this evil, to these men who put out diseases like coronavirus, who cause division like racism and, you know, all these phobias and, you know, women hating men and everybody hating each other because we're different and all the stupidity that's out there today. If you're following God, you don't fall for that. If you're following God, because God made us all, we're all one. So he wants us to speak as one. He wants us to be in one accord. So if you're other than that and you're, you know, uh, following the agenda of evil, you've fallen. You've fallen for it. Even if you think you're following Christ, but you you have that kind of mindset, you've fallen for the, the wrong God. Anyway, so the Lord has said that this is warfare prayer. To call his will into the earth. We call his will into the earth. So again, uh, he, we say, Father, you're glorious, you're in heaven, we glorify you, you are above all things. Your kingdom come, Lord, to the earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If we all started praying this and repenting for the sin, oh my God, what would happen? Now we're going through some weird stuff. These guys that created the coronavirus are now telling farmers to kill off their good livestock because they want to cause a food shortage. Well, we don't need to fall for that. We could tell uh, Father, according to your word, Lord God, you've asked, told us. 
and you've asked us to pray this way. Give us this day our daily bread. So we don't have to be without. God said in his word, don't you know that he knows what you need before you need it? Didn't Jesus just say that? I read that to you. He says, uh, you know, the father knows what you need. Don't vain, don't pray, oh, give me bread, give me bread. He knows you need bread. So father, give me this day my daily bread. And forgive me of my sins. You know, we, we have to constantly repent. And we have to constantly see that um, we are in right standing with God. It's, it's important. Um, sin is so easy to beset us. You know, I see a lot of ministries, and I won't talk bad about any of them, but I see it. Uh, where they start off with such good intent, whether it's local churches or big ministries on TV. And what they do is they start collecting money, and then the money becomes the idol. They start worrying more about the collection than they do about the souls being collected at the end of the service. Um, and I, so to speak, collected, you know what I mean, by giving their heart to Christ. Uh, evangelists, they go around to church to church and preach to the choir. That's not what evangelism really is supposed to be. And then you have these guys that go out and they get on, okay, send me $1,000 and God's going to bless you with $10,000. If God didn't tell you to do that, don't do it. Don't fall for that. I'm reading in Ezekiel right now. The Lord has me studying Ezekiel. And oh my gosh, the warning to the prophets who say they have a word from God and they don't. That's why I fear, why I, I hear from God and I know when he's talking to me, but if I'm impressed of something, but not, it's not a direct word that I can hear so clearly, I'll say, I feel the Lord's impressing me. Otherwise, when he is speaking, I will say, the Lord has spoken to me and told me this, but I'm very careful about it. And when I'm reading these warnings out there, there are so many false prophets out there. You really have to be wise, really pray for discernment. But anyway, back to our warfare prayer. So he asks us, forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. So, you know, there's many that we hold them in, in contempt or we hold them to um, things that we feel like, um, you know, they owe us or whatever. We need to let go of everything. Yes, we need to render unto Caesar that which is Caesar. If you bought a car and you have a car payment, that's not what this is talking about. All right. So just in in your daily dealings with those, um, I would really like for you to understand that we have to forgive those who sin against us. And we have to ask to be forgiven when we sin against others. And we all do it. We're human. And the Lord says here, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from, from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. So, you know, I have a lot of friends who... Um, and family that I share with, and we'll go back and forth. And I always have had the impression of the Lord that if we could see the demonic spirit behind a temptation, and this is in the book that I'm writing, but if, 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 a, say you're a guy and a beautiful female comes up and you're married and you have a good marriage, but this beautiful female comes up and all of a sudden you're thinking about her all day instead of your wife or vice versa, a female with a male. If you could see the demonic spirit behind that, would you fall for it? If you actually had full understanding and knowledge of what's being offered to you, would you fall for it? You see, we're all still being deceived just like Eve was. So we ask, Father, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us. Deliver us. Give us discernment. Help us to see past these lies of the enemy. You see, the, the enemy is a great deceiver. I see uh, so many who fall for the liars in politics, and they don't even get that they're falling. And then when you try to correct them, there's something wrong with you. You're the one who's got like uh, judgment and racism and, you know, this or that or the other thing. And they don't, they're not seeing it because they're not seeing with the spirit of discernment or God. They're seeing with fleshy eyes. And what we need to see is that one, no human's perfect, but Two, when someone is saying something that comes against the knowledge of God, you have to hear it. When someone talks about murdering children is okay outside the womb or, or in late birth, that's murder. It's murder. So you have to hear what these people are saying. You can't like three things he's saying and not like two things and think the dude's okay. You've got to pay attention to what's being said. 
So anyway, so the Lord can take us out of evil. And like for me, I know certain things that have tripped me before. So now I ask the Lord, keep them away from me. Keep these things that have caused me to fall from you away. Because at this time, I want nothing but you. Especially in the day we're in. And I pray to God that he uses me to help. Uh, even if it leads one person to the glorious heaven, uh, you know, then I've done what I'm supposed to. Anyway, he also talks about, so when you forgive trespasses, Father God will forgive you. So I wanted to just share that with you. So when you pray, worship the Lord, glorify him, call upon him that his will be done on earth. Bring those words into your prayers. Father, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Help me to forgive those who have hurt me. Help me to receive forgiveness from them or be able to apologize and keep me away from the temptations. And I know that you will provide everything for me. I will not live in fear. It's very, very important. What Jesus told us to pray here is very, very important. It is warfare prayer. So let me just say a quick prayer because this is getting long. Father, we just glorify you. We praise you in your holy name. You are above all. There is no God above you. There is no power above you. You are the one true God. Father, we glorify your name in the earth, and we ask that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, expose evil in every aspect of life from the tops uh, down who have been in Washington, D.C., right down to the classrooms where our children are being fed nonsense. Father, I ask, Lord God, that you open the eyes and ears and, and the mouths of Christians, Lord. Let them see the truth, Father God. Expose, expose, expose evil. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you that your hand and your protection and the angelic host is about the men that are fighting this warfare in the highest places. I thank you that you will exonerate them all, the General Flynn's, even the Roger Stone's, people who have been falsely accused to cover the sins of those who have lied. Expose, expose, expose evil, O oh God. And for those who are in your church who are not walking uh, circumspectly, those who manipulate and lie, those who say that God has given a word and he hasn't, those who are more concerned about the offering than those giving the offering, I repent and I ask for your forgiveness and I ask you to open the eyes of your believers that we would see your greatness and walk in your power and authority. Father, free America from this tyranny. Free us from this bondage, from this captivity. This is all it is. You told me coronavirus equaled fear. Fear empowers the enemy. We bind the spirit of fear. We do not have the spirit of fear. We have a sound mind. And I thank you, God, that you've given us authority to speak to this coronavirus and bind its work in Jesus' name. And all those who are manipulating data, all those who are bringing false, uh, false truths to scare the masses, Father, I pray again, exposure, exposure, proper justice. You are a just God, and we desire justice in the earth as it is with you, Father God. And I praise you, Lord, that you meet the need of everyone here. There will be no shortages in Jesus' name, that you bless everyone who's listening. Father, and I thank you. I give you all glory and honor that you keep us from temptation, but you give us the spirit of discernment that we would rightly, rightly, rightly make decisions. Father, I give you all glory, all honor, all praise. You are marvelous. You are good. And I love you. We love you, God. Forgive our sins, Lord God, and heal our land. Be glorified in the earth today, God. I give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' holy and mighty name, amen. Thanks for listening. Thanks for praying with me. And thanks for uh, just being part of you know, listening to anything I have to say. I know you've got a lot of channels you can look on, and I'm so grateful for those of you who tune in. And I pray that you are encouraged and that you encourage others because we're all called, all of us. Nobody's above another. And may the Spirit of the Lord be with you, bless you, and guide you in Jesus' name. See you soon. Bye.